the one thing you need to know about the ma the main thing about Ninja Trader Web it's very modular. You could be your own artist, right? You could put multiple domes up, single domes up. You could use the tab system. You could have a multi monitor set up. And there's a little plus button up here on the upper left hand side, and that brings you all of these modules that you could you just grab them and drag them onto your workspace, and you could situate them wherever you want. And you can see them all here, right now, right here, and right now. I'm gonna just kind of show you how I have mine set up. Upper left here is the trading ladder. We're going to spend a lot of time on this today because we're going to talk about how to place trades, how to manage working orders, and how to do stuff like OCOs and uh, trailing stops and stuff like that. So let's do that. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna set my quantity first, and this is important. It's easy to forget what your quantity is set if you change it around. I'm just going to put it at one contract or one lot, as we would say. Now, to place a market order to buy, I'm just going to simply click on the buy market button. I'm going to click once and it sends the money. I have, you heard the alert that we just, it, we, I think you heard the alert it said order filled. And that's just as simple as that. And it happens that quick and it goes to the exchange and it comes back and you'll see it on your trading ladder. You could see my position is, is green one, right? I'm, that means I'm long one, right? If it was red, it would be, I'd be short one, but we're, we're long, we're green one. And that's my price. My price is at 67, 56 and three quarters. And then my, my unrealized P&L, if I were to close this position right here at this last price, is minus $25. It's moving around. It's open. It's unrealized. It's open. And on the trading ladder itself, you could see that little carrot there that shows me up, up pointing up. I'm long. It's green. And that's my position. It gives me another uh, visual, uh, visual clue. Now, at this point, there's a couple of things we could do. That's a market order. I could have done a market order to sell instead of go uh, buy, right? Remember in futures trading, you can go short just as easily as you can go long. We'll demonstrate that in a second. But I, what I want to show you is just kind of the anatomy of a regular trade, right? So now that I'm long, I'm, in my opinion, the market's going to go higher and I would like to take profit at a higher price, which means I would like to sell at a higher price. So I'm going to move my mouse up to the price that I'd like. And this is just for demonstration purposes. This is not a trade idea. Let's move it over to 67.59 uh, and I'm going to move my mouse to that ask column or the offer column. And I'm going to click it once and it's gonna send a limit order to the exchange to sell a contract at 67.59, graphically represented here in, in, in red. And it's, it's sitting, sitting right there in the order book. And you can see there's 140 contracts in the order book uh, that were already there. And that will be dynamic as the day goes on. So there's my order. It's sitting there. I'm happy. Now that's, I'm not done yet because now I want to stop loss because, Hey, there's a chance I'm going to, I'm wrong here, right? There's a chance that this market's not going to go up and it's going to go down. And I want to protect myself and say, Hey, listen, if you know, this is where I think I'm wrong. I want to put a stop loss in there, uh, to protect myself from further losses. So again, same thing. I'm going to move my mouse to the price that I'm interested in. And in this case, let's just choose 67.55. And I'm going to move it over again into that ask column. This time, instead of using my left mouse button, I'm going to use my right mouse button. And I'm going to click. And it's going to send a stop order to the exchange. And so this is the anatomy of just about every trade in the world. Now, I'm waiting for something to happen, right? And I have the ability to modify these orders if I want. So not the, the position is the position, right? I'm long one, but the orders I could change. Let's say I decide, you know what? 59 even isn't a good price. I want to, I want to change. I'm changing my mind for whatever reason. I want to move it down to 58.50. I'm just going to put my mouse on that little uh, red label, click once, drag to a new price and let go. And it literally just canceled and replaced that order. It looks like it moved the order, but it canceled and replaced that order. Boom, I'm back in line behind 139 contracts at 59.50. And that's called cancel replace. It's super, super easy. Same thing with the stop. Grab it, move it, let go, and it changes it. It's really, really that simple. Now, another important button here is the close button. And so I'm going to go ahead and click the close button. And what it's going to do, it's going to liquidate my long position by selling a contract at the market, and it's going to cancel my working orders. So let's just go ahead and click on that close button. And there. So now my order is filled. I'm flat. I don't have an open position. You can see position is zero up here, and there's no working orders that are demonstrated anywhere on the actual ladder.
let's say I'd like to place a trade on the chart. I'd like to place a limit order to, uh, I don't know, buy a contract. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to move my mouse to the price I'm interested in. And so you can see my crosshairs here. I'm looking at different prices and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to click at the area, which I think, which I'm interested in. I'm going to click once and it's going to say, Hey, Jim, do you want to place a buy limit at 5250? Or do you want to place a sell stop? at 67.50, 2.50, both legitimate orders, right? But in this case, I don't have a position. I'd like to enter on a limit order. And, a, and then I'm going to click on that little blue tab there. Click once. And I've sent that order to the exchange, right? So I'm long two contracts. And so let's take it to the next level. Let's think about OCOs. Order cancels other, right? We could play some automated trades here. And let's do it with the trading ladder here um, in the E-mini S&P. At the very bottom here, it says uh, off, right? And there's a little down arrow. And on the right-hand side, there's a gear. We're gonna click on the gear and it's gonna give me some options. And the first thing I'm gonna do here, I wanna set up a simple bracket order, right? It's called a simple bracket order. And I'm gonna turn it on. ATMs, I'm gonna turn it on. And I could name it if I want to, but you know, we, we, so you could save it for later reference and it just, you could load it up immediately. I wanna show this in ticks. And the type here is gonna be, I wanna set a profit target and a stop loss at the same time. Now there's a drop down menu here that gives us other, other options as well. We could just set a stop loss or we could just set a, a profit target, but let's do it, let's do a simple bracket. So where do I want my profit target or my take profit to be? And I'm gonna change, I'm gonna use ticks and this will be from where I'm, where my, where my price is, where I enter the market at. So let's just for, for demonstration purposes say my profit target is going to be 10 ticks and my stop loss will be, we'll call it eight ticks. And the stop's just a regular stop. We won't change this at this point. So I'm going to hit go ahead and remember this is on. So this is important. This is on. I'm going to hit save. And so at the very bottom here of this ATM, you don't, you don't see off down here. So you know you're on. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit buy at the market again. And it did a whole bunch of stuff at once, right? It bought a contract at the market for me. It placed my profit target, 10 ticks up from my fill price, and it placed my stop, eight ticks below. Now that's not all, it did more. These are linked together. This is an OCO. So if the market moves my way and I get filled on my profit target, the stop loss is automatically canceled. Alternatively, if the market goes against me and I get stopped out, I'll be sad. But not only that, my profit target will automatically be canceled also. So I won't have a dangling profit target limit order or a dangling stop loss in the marketplace, even though I'm flat. So this is kind of a good way to do it. And there's discipline reasons why you might want to do it also. So best practices, stop loss is there. That's best practice number one. Um, and then now we have a profit target established. We're good. Auto trail. Auto trail is a little bit more sophisticated, but it's easier to get your head around. So stop loss is initially set at 10 once I'm filled. Now um, we have a stop loss button, a profit trigger and frequency. So the first thing I set is my profit trigger. Let's say we wanna say, okay, if the market goes our way five ticks, then I want my stop to trail, but I don't want it to trail where we, where we originally set it. I want it to trail a certain amount of stop, of ticks below my profit trigger. So in this case, I'm gonna set it to four. One, two, three, four. So when my trigger is hit, my, well, that'll be too tight then, my bad. No, no, it won't be too tight, it'll be perfect. All right, so I'm gonna set it to four. So if my trigger gets hit, five ticks up, then the stop is gonna change to four ticks below my trigger price instead of being 10 ticks below my entry price or whatever I set it for, and I actually forgot. Um, and then the frequency of the trail is gonna be one for one. So as the market goes my way, it'll tick up one for one for every increment. It, it, on the inside corner of the chart is where you see uh, your tools, right? Crosshairs, data box, drawing tools, and that's where FIB will be. Um, you could lock stuff up. You could uh, zoom in or zoom out. You could change your time frame, change candle to the line on close or bar chart or whatever you want. And there's some chart settings here. I'll tap on that also. And there's a gear, a configure gear as well. 
The fib tool, um, I believe, is under is in the looks like a little slanted line going up forward here, and here's where all your different options are: line, polygon, horizontal, uh, fib retracement, uh, volume profile, which I've already added. By the way, you can see it on the right hand side of the chart: trend channel, regression channel, all, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll go ahead and click on the fib retracement, and now I'm just going to pick a level here. I'm just going to go, you know, low to high. And I could extend it across. I could minimize it. I could change the colors uh, to it. I'll show you how to do that. Um, just click a second time, and then I have a, I've added a fib, a, a fib retracement uh, measurement to the chart. Let's go ahead and add indicators. Let's add one to start. All right. So let's add a moving average. We'll add I don't know. Just we'll do a simple moving average. Um, uh, Fourteen period sounds good. Light blue. Um, input on close. I like the lines. The overlay. Right. It's going to overlay in the chart hit uh, save. And so now I have that moving average there. It's graphically represented. It's blue on there. To change the period of it, if you want to change it, you just simply just double click on it. It opens up that dialog box again and you go over to period and you just change it, right? So I'll change it to eight. Um, I know Mike likes fib, fib numbers and I'm going to hit apply and it will apply. I hit save and I just changed it. It's really intuitive. It's really simple. You click on it, that dialog box pop pops up, change colors, change anything you want on it. This presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of NinjaTrader, LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade futures with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the NinjaTrader website.